Hi students, welcome to exercise 27b, uh, problems with natural logs and uh, increasing decreasing, po decre decreasing populations. Alright, so the log we've been working with uh, so far, um, unless we've given it a base, it has a base of 10. We're going to introduce here a new na uh, log function, uh, has all the exact same properties, except it has a particular base, we call this the natural log, and has a base of e. And for now, without going into too much detail, we're going to take e as 2.718, blah, 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 up to infinity. So this is uh, an irrational number. It cannot be written as a fraction. So just for our discussion's sake, we're going to go with e is equal to 2.7. All right. So the natural log, uh, this one right here, never has another base other than e. Okay. So that's the only base it ever has. All right. So let's just kind of get acquainted with e and kind of what it looks like. So let's write... Let's draw the function e to the power of x. Well, this is the exponential function where the base is 2.7. Again, I'm rounding, but for our sake, 2.7 is good enough. So e to the power of x would pass by the point 0, 1, okay, because e to the power of 0 is 1. And then our next point at x equals 1, so if you put 1 in there, that would give you e, which is 2.7. So our point would be approximately there, okay, and our exponential function would look very much like any other exponential function where the asymptote is at zero. All right, well, it's inverse function, okay, so when the x and the y flip, so we remember that any exponential has an inverse of a log function. Well, this exponential function has the natural log because the base is e. So if we were to flip all those points, the point zero one becomes the point one zero, okay, the point here you'd be at 2.71, and you'd have this type of function. So it'd still be a log function, very similar to all the other ones. The only difference is the base of this one is e, and the other one would base is 2, 3, 4, 10, whatever. All right, so again, what I just meant is that the natural log function has the exact same properties as any other log function. The only difference is the base is e. All right, evaluate the following expressions. Well, the natural log has the exact same values or exact same properties as the log function. So if ever you have a quotient inside the argument, right, you can change this into a difference of logs. So that would be natural log of 5 minus natural log of 3. So now I invite you to find your calculator and find the natural log function. So the calculator has two buttons, has a log and natural log. So you can plug in natural log of 5 minus natural log of 3. And if you were to find the value of that using a decimal, to, we're going to go to four decimals, 0 0.5108. Okay? And this one, um, don't forget, this is the argument here, e to the cubed. So the cube can go in front. So what you would have is you'd have 3 ln e. And the value of ln e, right, so very similar to the log, so log base 2 of 2, okay, the value of this was 1, because 2 to the power of 1 is 2. Well, same thing happens if you have ln e, because don't forget the base of this is e, so you have e to the power of what gives you e? Well, that would also be 1. So this is 3 times 1, which is obviously equal to 3. All right. So where do we see base of e? Well, the base of e is often used when describing exponential increasing and de decreasing functions with like growth and decay. So for example, in, in uh, chemistry, you'll talk a lot about like half-life, things like that, uh, growth, population growth. Uh, we've already talked about um, money, how it grows. Uh, you usually wouldn't use e for these types of cases, but uh, for any other population growth, things like that, you would probably use functions with a base of e. All right, so here's an example of where we would find uh, exponentials or increasing, decreasing functions with base of e. So on June 1st, there are 500 mice in a field near the landfill. Okay, we estimate the population of mice has grown to 800 by the 20th of June. So if this population exponential increase remains consistent, what would be the population on June 28th? Okay, well, these types of functions use a formula that is modeled here. So the future value, again, we've seen that before as a variable. So fv equals to c, which is the initial value. So very similar to our exponential functions again before. e is the base to the power of i. 
I is a rate of increase and decrease. So you can kind of look at that as a percentage. And T is your time in days. Uh, and that's time in days because of this formula is in days. Sometimes you'll use this formula with time in years. Sometimes times in minutes, depending on what type of, uh, of uh, different types of information you're given. All right. So in this case, notice that if I was positive, so larger than zero, this would mean an increasing exponential function, which means the, po the, f the population would be growing. If I was negative, it would be a decreasing exponential function, therefore population getting smaller. In our case, our I should be positive because our population is growing. Okay, so let's take a look at the information we have. We have the future value. We have the value 800 on day 20. So we know that FV is equal to two, or sorry, not 200. FV is equal to 800, the amount of mice we have on the 20th day. We have our initial value, which is 500 on the beginning of day one. Okay, and we're going to have our time in days is 20, so 20 days later. And the only thing I don't know is I. All right. So that's the, all the values inside my formula. I'm going to plug them in. So we have 800 equals to 500 e to the power of i times t, which is 20. Okay, so notice, like we did in exercise 27, the variable is in the exponent. So this is where logs come in. So we're going to isolate this exponential function here, which means I need to bring the 500 to the other side. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide by 500. Okay, so what we have here is 8 fifths equals to i, sorry, e to the power i times 20. All right, so these are types of questions where I'm going to use the natural log instead of the log function. The advantage of using the natural log is it has a base of e. And notice in this question, there's a base of e here. Okay, so here I'm going to apply logarithms to both sides. So I'm going to apply natural log of, well, 8 over 5 is 1.6. So I'm going to rewrite it as 1.6. Natural log of e to the power of i times 20. Okay? Well, this is an exponent of your argument e, so now this part can go in front of the log. So you have natural log of 1.6 equals to i times 20 times natural log of e. Well, we've already seen this earlier in the lesson, actually the last page. Natural log of e is 1. So I can just kind of forget that's there. I'm not going to cross it out, but this is 1. So now I just need to solve and divide by 20 on each side. So if I have divided by 20, it's going to get rid of that 20 here. What I have left is natural log of 1.6 divided by 20 equals to i. Okay, well, that is our rate of increase or decrease. So that's our rate of, of change. So I'm going to plug this into my calculator. So again, you have natural log of 1.6 divided by 20. This gives us a rate of, I'm going to keep every single decimal, and I'll explain that a little later. So 0 0.02350018.15. Okay, so that is our rate of change. So again, you can kind of look this as a percentage, which means it's about 2% a day, but that's, again, not exact. Um, the reason I'm going to take every single one of these decimals is because it's an exponential function, which means there's, the small differences will make a big difference at the end. All right, so my question was, what would the population be on June 20th, 28th, sorry. So I still need to find that information. So I need to find the future value. So the future value is, I don't know. Well, I know that my initial value, and we can start on day 20, which is maybe a little easier. So our initial value will be 800. Okay, this also works if you start with 500. Our time in days will be eight. So eight days later, so this is from day 20, right? So day 20 is 800. And I know my i, i is equal to natural log of 1.6 over 20. Okay, so I could also write this value. That would also be correct. Okay, so now we can plug all this information into my formula. We have future value equals to 800 times e to the power of i times 8. And again, just to save myself some time, instead of writing all that, I just wrote i. That is the value I'm going to plug in. So now I invite you to, again, bring out your calculator. Make sure you can calculate this value. If you can't calculate this value, well, that basically means you can't do it. Uh, okay, so I'm going to plug in 800 and then E. If you guys look in your calculator, you're going to have a function, 
e to the power of something. Maybe you'd want to find that, and if you haven't found it, we will look for it in class. e to the power of 8 times i, and i is this value right over here. So again, you plug that in, and you get 8, sorry, 965, and I'm going to round to a whole number because we're talking about mice here. So you can't have 0.5 of a mouse. So the future value on day, on day 28 would be 965 mice. Okay, the last example for this uh, exercise, find the half-life of a radioactive substance with decays per hour at a constant rate of 0 0.0078. Okay, so a um, couple of things you need to read here. Half-life, that's an important word. We're going to discuss that. We'll talk about that in a second. Decays. Okay, a decay means something that's losing its value, which means when we give a, a rate of change, which is this one, this kind of just ref informs us that this is technically negative 0 0.0078 because it's a decaying value, okay? All right, so our basic functions here would be the, the final value is equal to the initial value e to the power of i t. Okay, well, this is the value of i, so I've given the value of i is equal to negative 0 0.0078, again, negative because it decays, okay? The half-life of a substance, the definition of half-life, you've taken chem, you might understand, is it when you have half of the original amount left, which means if you start with 100 milligrams, you're asking how much time is it will it take to get 50 milligrams, and so on and so forth. So it could be 80, goes down to 40, so on. All right, well, notice that I did not give you initial value. Okay, so how do we find out how much the original, or sorry, I didn't give you an original value, how much do I find out what half would be? Well, think about it. If this is 100, then this would be 50, right? So if I was to solve this, VF over C equals to E to the IT, okay? This fraction here is going to be half always, because if this is 100, this is 50, so 50 over 100. If this is 80, this is 40, 40 over, over 80. So this fraction here, no matter what, is one half. And that is by definition the half-life. So this is the half-life. It automatically gives you a half of what the original was uh, before. Okay, so and I know the value of i, so I'm going to plug that in now. One half e to the power of negative 0 0.078 t. Okay, so now I have to solve for t. Again, you notice you have an exponential function with a base of e. So I'm going to use natural log. So it's natural log of a half equals to natural log of e to the power of negative 0 0.078 t, okay? I can now drop this exponent in front, so it's ln of 1 half equals to negative 0 0.0078 t, ln e, okay? And again, for the third time, third page in a row, ln e, this value is 1, right? So we know this is 1 here. So now I have ln of 1 half equals to negative 0 0.0078 t. And I divide by, obviously, this negative 0 0.0078 to solve for t. And I have a natural log of a half over negative 0 0.0078 equals t. Again, open your calculator, take it out, make sure you can plug in these values and get the value of 88 so 88.865 minutes equals to the time. Okay, so I know it's in minutes because if you look at it, um, oh, sorry, it's hours, not minutes because of, so uh, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to just change that to hours. Okay, so again, I know that because the question uh, mentioned hours in it. Okay, guys, hope that uh, somewhat made sense, and I'm sure we'll talk about this more in class.